Good morning. We begin our worship today, this third Sunday after the Epiphany, with the Collect of Welcoming. Please join me. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, living within us, sent to St. Peter's, all who are hurting or in need, all who are searching for you or for answers in their lives, prepare us this day to receive them as Christ would. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the spirit of your love. Help us to recognize each person as an individual sent by you who will enrich our lives. Most of all, O oh God, let this be a place of love and acceptance of all your children. In the name of your child, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Please join me. It's all right. Y'all in. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty. Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O God, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. We're in anguish. Thank you. 
time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walk in darkness on them, light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. People exalt when dividing plunder for the yoke of the burden and the bar across their shoulders. The rod of their oppressor you have broken as on the day. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for this morning, Psalm 27, will read responsibly by full verse. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? To behold the fair beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. Even now he lifts up my head above my enemies round about me. Hearken to my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. Hide not your face from me, nor turn away your servant in displeasure. of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. That I do. Indeed, of its power, us might not be emptied of its power, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Now when Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. He left Nazareth and made his home in Capernaum, by the sea in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali, so that what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Land of Zebulun, land of Naphtali, and the road by the sea across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. In darkness have seen a great light, and for those who sat in the region, and shadow of death light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, 
repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. As he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw his brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. He said to them, follow me. And followed him. He went from there where he saw two other brothers, son of Zebedee and his brother John, both with their father, landing, and he called them. Immediately they took their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Take my lips and speak through them. Take our ears and hear through them. Take our eyes and see through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire to love and follow you. May I speak in the name of the living God. Amen. Amen. When was the last time you dropped everything you were doing to follow something or someone you found important in your life? This week, I saw a funny and clever cartoon of Jesus holding a smartphone that said, congratulations, you have 12 followers. <laughs> well, like many of you, I laughed and thought it was goofy at first. But then I quickly realized, wait, how easy is it to get distracted and fall down the rabbit hole of social media or the internet? and then not realize it until many minutes or even hours later. Social media is one of the main modern day ways to quickly gather energy around something important. So I guess we could say that Jesus was the influencer of his time. But the thing that stood out most to me when we this week's gospel was the fact that those fishermen knew nothing about Jesus until that moment. In her lecture reflection for this week, James will They did not know the stories of his birth, of how the mysterious travelers were taught a lesson about kingship. As far as you knows, they were not present when the heavens opened and God proclaimed his love for his son at the Jordan. They did not know what Jesus had just been through in the wilderness as he discovered what he must reject. All of this, we, the readers, have just seen in Matthew's first four chapters. But Peter, Andrew, James, and John come to it new, without the benefit of these huge hints, and yet they drop their nets to follow Jesus. This doesn't even offer any very obvious inducements. There's no mention of fame, just excitement. Instead, he offers a chance to attract others who have just been attracted. And that's the chain reaction that has, has never quite fizzled out and has us here today. So again, thank you. When was the last time you dropped everything you were doing to follow something or someone you found important in your life? After preparing for my ordination to the priesthood, I have spent a lot of time reflecting on the prophets of my life, the people who have supported me on this journey to where I am. And when pondering this gospel, Mama Monica came to mind for me. After working as a midwife managing the busy maternity ward of one of Kenya's largest hospitals, Monica Ogutu noticed large amounts of high-risk pregnancy and the lack of access to safe, 
trauma-informed reproductive maternal and neonatal health care. So she listened to her patients and created an organization, which later became known as KMET, Kasumu Medical Education Trust, which began simply as a single room maternal health clinic. Continued to listen to the needs of her community and realized that after giving birth, many of the moms were just teens and had few ways of supporting their new babies. So with the help of the insight of those teen moms, KMET launched a vocational training program so that these new mothers could learn trades such as hairdressing, catering, and tailoring to be able to support their families, and also launched a free daycare to ensure that the kids had a safe place to go while the women were learning. Monica and the quickly expanding KMET team continued to listen and expand to create a safe shelter for survivors of gender-based violence a low interest loan program to help local communities start businesses around collective needs, an early education program for local schools around consent and healthy relationships, and the list continues to go on. I had the immense privilege of meeting Mama Monica as she was affectionately, affectionately known. She called every single person that met, met her a son or a daughter. About 10 years ago, on a college summer fellowship working alongside the KMET programs in Kasumu, Kenya. If I have ever met a fisher for people, it is Mama Monica. And I think what distinguishes her from so many other organizational leaders is her grassroots approach to organizing, bearing witness and truly listening to the needs of the community rather imposing what she thinks is right, then working together to empower them and find new ways to fish and feed and support their entire community. And then those communities that learn those tools share those same tools with the neighboring communities and it grows. In the midst of national conflict and political unrest, Mama Monica and her now hundreds of adopted children are living out God's kingdom among them. When Peter, Andrew, James, and John drop their nets, they are choosing a different way of existence, a communal relationship of healing neighbors. Rather than following a top-down monarchy with goals of power and wealth, the choice is to follow God and respond to the needs of God's people. As humans stepping into something new, whether it be a vocation, ministry, practice, or response to a need in our community, we want to know what to expect. We want predictability, and the reality of saying yes to following Jesus is that we are taking a risk where we don't have many answers about the future, but what we do have is each other, our siblings who will walk with and stumble, stumble with at times in our following of Christ. This gospel also a really helpful invitation as our Diocese of New Jersey discerns and calls our new bishop next Saturday. Shortly after Bishop Gates was elected as the new diocese, new bishop of the Diocese of Massachusetts about eight years ago, and that's my sponsoring diocese, he made a powerful request to the congregations in asking that the language to describe the Diocese of Massachusetts and the staff there be shifted from the diocese to our diocese. While the change of three small letters may not seem so significant, what that requested was reorient the communities in our diocese of Massachusetts, that the work of the bishop and their staff is not siloed or top down, but rather communal and collective 
with input from more than just the staff at the cathedral and diocesan offices. The work of living out God's kingdom starts with a grassroots approach, paying attention, listening, and responding to injustice and oppression with love. So I'll ask you more, but different words and a little bit more future oriented this time. Where are the places where we meet, might need to drop what we're doing and reorient ourselves to follow Christ and live out God's kingdom among us? Amen. My brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand and join me in an affirmation of our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, it is the Lord who speaks in our hearts, who says, seek my face. With humble hearts, let us come before the Lord, saying, When we call, O Lord, hearken to our voice. God, help your church, heal her divisions, increase her joy. Unite her members that we might have a common purpose to proclaim the gospel. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Chip, our bishop, and for Marshall, our rector, and Elizabeth, our associate rector. When we call, O oh Lord, hearken to our voice. God, help this nation and the world. Where there are heavy burdens, where oppression reigns, show the strength of your arm and set your people free. May the coming of your kingdom be ever nearer. When we call, O oh Lord. God, help your creation. You make glorious the way of the sea. You bring us joy at the harvest. Teach us to live in harmony with all you have made. We give thanks in the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Church of North India, United, and for the Reverends Lydia Edwards and Dr. Thomas Haverly. We lift up those serving in the armed forces, particularly Nicole, Matthew, Matthew, Austin, Daniel, Shelby, and Brian. When we call, O oh Lord. God, help our local community. May your great light drive away all of the shadows that darken our region. Even now, lift up the heads of the downcast. 
when we call, O Lord. God, help the sick and suffering. Do not forsake them, but show yourself to be the strength of their lives and their salvation. May Jesus be the healer of every disease and sickness among the people. We pray for Elizabeth, Rick, Christopher, and Christine, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Renee, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, Dylan, Kay, and Michael, Doug, and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Anne, Gary, Kay, Rob, Sonny, Betty, Guy, Peter, Pat, Piper, Aaliyah, William, Phil, George, AJ, Brandon, Gail, Lisa, Teddy, the O'Donnell family, Peter, Rosemary, Ethel, Wayne, Manel, Aiden, Eddie, and Nancy, Glenn. When we call, O oh Lord, God, help the dying and the dead. Hide them in the secrecy of your dwelling. May all those being saved say with boldness, I belong to Christ forever. When we call, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, good morning. God's peace. How y'all doing today? Yeah? Any Giants fans out there? Well, having uh, happy having prayers of condolence uh, over here. Any Eagles fans out there? Okay. Well, we'll be having triumphal prayers over here. Yeah, it is what it is. We live in Jersey. There is a line that breaks between uh, Central and South Jersey, and we, we hold them up. I will ask your prayers for Lisa and Mother Allison because they live below the New York Philadelphia news line. So their biased coverage that went down on that side of the line, I'm sure, was a little overwhelming for everyone. But uh, we pray for, is there, are there games today? Okay, we'll pray for everybody who's rooting for whoever. Um, and whatever. Go Bills? Okay, there you go. All right. I have no idea what's going on with that, and I'm just going to abstain. Now, if you want to debate the English Premier League, uh, I can uh, pull my dad up on Zoom, and we can have that conversation, but uh, everybody knows Chelsea's uh, the hot ticket in town, unless it's my dad who roots for Man City. See, when it gets esoteric, nobody gets it. <laughs> 
You're Chelsea fans? Okay, there, Chelsea supporters, there you go. Uh, we have next week the annual meeting of the parish, and I urge you to join us for that, whether you are here in person or online. This is one of the great moments uh, for us as the body of Christ here at St. Peter's. We remind ourselves who we are annually. We gather together in consultation with each other. We elect officers and representatives, officers to vestry and representatives to the diocesan convention as we take part in the wider church. These things are important because because actually this coming Saturday, we're electing a new bishop. And contingent upon this is, of course, our organization as a parish, and then ultimately our organization as a convention of the Diocese of New Jersey. This is who we are. So that sense of being organized here and being prepared for the vision and reflection of what's happening in the state of the parish, as well as looking forward, is key. And we actually hope that this next week will provoke in us that those things that we need to see the vision, as Liz, Reverend Liz was talking about, what is it that God is calling us towards that we are willing to set something down and take that up, set down one net to take up another. So please do join us for that. Worship will be at 9 a.m. And then right after worship, we're going to dismiss you to coffee hour. We're actually reviving coffee hour in 2023. Everybody excited for that? It's the eighth sacrament, folks. Come on, let's 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 shake it out. So we're, we'll have a we'll have a very wonderful brief coffee hour, and then we're going to come back here to the main sanctuary, gavel in our meeting, elect our officers, celebrate our life together, and uh, then we'll head off to watch whatever. Uh, no, next week's a bye week, right? Or is there is there going to be next week's a champion? Then you can watch the championship games. So we'll get you home in time for the pregame. Uh, pregame shows where all of the uh, talking heads yell at each other about who's having a bad day or a good day. But we're going to have a good morning in any event. There will be a sign-up sheet at that coffee hour to invite you to participate in support coffee hour in a week to come, and that will fall between the services. So we're very excited about restoring that. A couple of things coming up. As I said before, our delegation will be going down to the diocesan convention at the cathedral this coming Saturday. That is myself, Craig Kafafian, who has been uh, swiftly digesting all of the materials created by the diocese so we can learn a little bit more about the candidates. You too as well can and express an opinion to him, to Maureen Barlow or to Jean Dabrowski. Those are our three lay delegates as well as myself. If you've been able to watch any of the meet and greets, we'd love to have your feedback and your thoughts on that as we go down. We represent the parish and we vote to the conscience and care of what's happening both here at St. Peter's and how we perceive that in the wider diocese. We have five candidates to choose from, three women, two men, of varying different levels of experience and personality, and uh, may the Holy Spirit guide us in all her machinations toward the election of the 13th Bishop of the Diocese. We look forward to greeting that person at the end of the day on Saturday and announcing it at the annual meeting. After this service in the parish hall, we'll have our finance ministry meeting. Uh, this will be a regular thing as our team meets to support and care for and nurture the resources of the parish on behalf of the vestry and help us find our way forward as we navigate um, the waters of this inland sea that is the, uh, the set of resources that we are given for ministry here at St. Peter's. Uh, and uh, on February 6th, we're going to have a memorial service for Keith Gabbett. Um, those of you who are longtime members of the parish will remember the Gabbets, Keith and Dorothy. They were linchpins of the formation of Community Folk Ministries, as well as Keith being one of the anchors as riches of our acolyte crew. Um, so uh, if you were a youth acolyte, you remember Keith fondly as being one of the provokers at the 10 a.m., the same way Rich is at 8, reminding you which order the candles get lit. He reminded me as well when I first arrived as rector. So um, look forward to receiving him back into the arms of this parish, this community. Um, it is a sad thing that we are commending him to God, but it's also a blessed thing because he's up there and I'm sure Dorothy's wearing her bright blue dress and is ready for dancing. Um, so uh, we're celebrating his life. Uh, speaking of celebrations, Liz, you want to say anything about February 11th? Yeah, Sunday as well. So we'll, you'll be able to have the uh, so February 11th will be, um, God willing, and people consenting, my ordination to the priesthood. Um, and we learned last week that it also um, is the anniversary of the consecration of Arbor C. Harris, who is the first woman bishop in the Episcopal Church. So it has some pretty significant meaning. Uh, so I really hope that you will, uh, if you're able to join in person or online, 
Uh, and we're also going to be uh, stuffing Father Marshall's process food for Alex with some time. So, um, see me if you have any questions, but it would be a delight to have as many of you there. The, uh, the challenge of a priestling is that she gets to plan her service. So um, this is, this is uh, her second great liturgy that she is pulling together. And uh, I really excited, I'm excited for it. Uh, Reverend Liz is bringing together her, uh, her extended spiritual and physical family from Massachusetts, as well as here in New Jersey, um, and also uh, incorporating that sense of two dioceses coming together to support a person becoming uh, a priest to the wider church. So we're very excited to be able to support that and host that. Um, one of the interesting things is during my tenure, we've had uh, three ordinations uh, that come out of this parish, uh, two uh, two women who are priests, one uh, one person, a male who is uh, who is a deacon, and uh, and in the long tenure of this parish, over 260 years, um, Reverend Liz is the second woman to stand at this altar and to be uh, priested uh, from it. We also have Muriel Hubert. Muriel uh, was a classmate of mine. So there are there's Mother Allison, there's Reverend Liz, and Muriel back in the day. This is amazing. We're making history as we go. So very excited for that. Uh, as I said, we have the electing convention this coming Saturday. Um, and as well, uh, Reverend Liz mentioned it, please continue your support for Alice's Cup as well as our Mini Mart Food Pantry. Uh, one of the things that is deeply challenging, and uh, I wanna remind you that we have one more day, I think, of uh, the canned cans um, that you can get to ShopRite and do some purchasing. We need those canned goods and particularly the extenders like sauerkraut, spinach, and other items like that um, that are able to be added to dishes that people get <laughs> from the pantry prepared foods like craft dinner and box box food like that, because those are those enhance the nutritional value as well as the ability of that dish to feed more people. So please do consider that. Support us, drop off those items either at Alice's Cup or here at the Mini Mart Food Pantry, and of course um, here in the, in the Narthex and the Vestibule. If you need help buying stuff from ShopRite, Luann has ShopRite cards. What synergy is that? So you can purchase your ShopRite cards, go straight to ShopRite, get those canned goods, and then bring them back on Sunday for the annual meeting or during the week. We'll make sure those get distributed. Any other announcements? I think that's it. Thank you for your support and care. We appreciate your presence. It is a blessing to be gathered here in the witness to God um, and uh, in witness to God and to walk in love as Christ loved us. So let us present our offerings and sacrifices to God. Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Dios de tenera, tanto amaste al mundo, que en la plenitud de los tiempos nos enviaste a tu Hijo único para redimiros. Se encarnó por el Espíritu Santo, nació de la Virgen María, y vivió como uno de nosotros, pero sin pecado. A la gente pobre la anunció la salvación, a la gente en prisión, la libertad, en la gente afligida, la alegría. Para cumplir tu designios, se entregó a la muerte y levantándose del sepulcro, destruyó la muerte y el renovó toda la creación. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died for us and rose again. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. Padre Celestial, cuando llega la hora de recibir tu gloria, tu Hijo no abandonó, abandonó a sus amigos, sino que los amó hasta el fin. Cuando Esteban cenando tomó pan, te dio gracias, lo partió y se lo dio a sus discípulos diciendo, tomen y coman. Esto es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes. Hagan esto en memoria mío. Después cenar, tomo el cáliz de vino. Le dio gracias y se la dio a sus discípulos diciendo, beban todos. Esto es mi sangre de la nueva alianza que por ustedes y por todos se derrama para el perdón de los pecados. Cada vez que lo beban, hagan esto en memoria mía. Father, we, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We bless you. We give thanks to you, O Lord. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ. As que al compartir este pan y este cáliz seamos uno en cuerpo y en espíritu, una ofrenda viva en Cristo para alabanza de tu nombre. No te olvides, Señor, de tu santa iglesia católica y apostólica redimida por la sangre de tu ungido. As visible su unidad, constante su fe y permanente su paz. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Peter, our patron, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. And now in the language of our heart, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Yeah. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Christ.
blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Another quiet week? Wow. That's all good. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. La paz de Dios que sobrepasa todo entendimiento, mantén tus corazones y mentes en el conocimiento y amor de Dios, y de su Hijo, Jesucristo, nuestro Señor, y la bendición de Dios el Todopoderoso, el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo, quédate entre vosotros y permanece contigo siempre. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Thank you. 